peace must be our goal and our guide. And all that we strive for as a human family, dignity and hope, progress and prosperity, depends on peace. But peace depends on us. You know, when one is asked to talk about leadership in Africa, one's mind wanders in many directions. Because in the recent past, the continent of Africa has been the subject of scrutiny from many quarters. There are those who are Afro-pessimists and take the view that Africa will never realize our potential. There are those Afro-optimists who take the view that the jury is still out on the success or otherwise of the continent of Africa. I am an Afro-optimist. I take the view that this continent has had a glorious past and that this continent has had her trials and tribulations, but her better days are in the future. There are those who, when talking about Africa, are in the habit of dealing with Africa as if it were one monolithic block. They do not recognize that the beauty of Africa is in her diversity. And indeed, when you care to undertake a geographical survey of Africa, you will be amazed at what the West of Africa offers what the center of Africa offers, what the south of Africa offers, what the horn of Africa offers, and what the north of Africa offers. That is the continent that we are talking about today. And we are talking about her because she continues in many ways to punch below her weight. And many are the commentators who take the view that the reason why she continues to punch below her weight is because the men and women who have had the privilege and honor to serve her in different political capacities or leadership capacities have not served her well. There may be merit in that assessment, but those who are quick to judge, those whose only claim to fame is that they are professional fault finders must ask many questions before they judge and condemn Africa unfairly. <laughs> this continent, and I remember, and if we are to judge this continent fairly, we must go back to the past and look to the past and ask about this continent. And there are many who have written about this continent. How many of you here will forget the great writings of Senegal's Ante Cheikh Diop, who has documented in many ways the glorious past of the continent of Africa, the great kingdoms in Africa. When Europe was still in the caves, Africans were building monuments. If they were not building them in the Ashanti Empire, they were building them in Monomotapa here in Zimbabwe. And there is a sense in which all those have been consigned to the Museum of History. And those who look at Africa see Africa as a scar on the conscience of humanity, not remembering that they were themselves co-authors of Africa's misfortunes. We are the only continent and the only people in the world who have been 
commodified. How many of you will remember that agrarian Europe had to commodify Africa in order to realize our level of development? At one time in those early days, we will remember even as we talk about leadership that half of the population of this continent was taken away if they were not taken away from ghana which they then christian gold cost they were taken away from angola if they were not taken away from angola they were taken away from mozambique if they were not taken from mozambique they were taken from senegal if the arabs were not taking us the europeans were taking us if the europeans in their different tribes were not conquering us they were stealing from us those are the realities it is that we don't talk about when we talk about this continent and you know if one cares to judge the African continent one must be historically conscious the oldest African country after we regained our independence from greater chief and the question that we must ask ourselves why is it that this continent finds itself in that space. If it is not Europe summoning us, it is the United States of America summoning us. Everybody is in the business of summoning us. One may ask, what has this to do with leadership? You know, I listened to the Chinese president speaking in eloquent Mandarin. <laughs> saying how the relationship between Africa and China is a mutually beneficial relationship. He spoke about Africa as if it was one country he did not remind himself in my mind that there are 55 countries in Africa or 54 if you ask Morocco. <laughs> and I, I listened to the Chinese president specifically mentioning the Gambia and a few other than Sao Tome and Principe that they were welcomed back to the world because they had renounced their relationship with Taiwan and they had now recognized the one China policy. Do I say this because there is anything wrong with China? No. I'm saying this because the Chinese are providing leadership for their people. They know exactly what they want for their people and they are doing exactly what they want for their people for the benefit of their people. The question that I'm posing to us, do we know what we want for our people? Are we doing what we need for our people? And the answer is, I doubt. Why do I doubt? I doubt because at the end of the entire enterprise, the Chinese president said that he had given or his government had given 60 billion United States dollars to 54 African countries. Notionally, therefore, each country would be entitled to no more than 1.5 billion. Half of the presidents who are present in China, each one of them, half of them, can produce 1.5 billion. Sportsmen in Europe and America, including boxers, can earn one billion dollars in a single bout. And we are here celebrating and singing the praises of China because they gave us 60 billion. Once again, it is a statement of the ability to recognize what leadership is all about. I'm submitting to us that when we interact with people like the Chinese, there is something to learn from them. We may condemn them at fora such as this, but there is wisdom in asking ourselves, how is it 
that this country which about 30 years ago could not feed half our population has in 30 years during our lifetime succeeded in pulling up nearly 800 million people out of poverty. How is it that every road that is now be being built in Africa, whether the road is in Benin or in Nairobi, Kenya, or in Johannesburg, South Africa, or in Kigali, in Rwanda, or the Democratic Republic of Congo, there is a Chinese farm whose name I cannot pronounce as the contractor for that farm. How is it? How is it that China, which about 30 years ago did not produce a mobile phone, today out of every 10 mobile phones, we are using six which are from China. If it is not techno, it is some other phone. If we are in not inviting Jack Ma, we are inviting another Chinese because we have seen that they have the ability to organize the affairs. Some of us, particularly those of us who are in the middle class, our pride is that our child is learning Mandarin as a second language, not Isi Zulu, Mandarin. Good afternoon, viewers. Welcome to Punchline Africa TV, broadcasting all the way from Nairobi, the Republic of Kenya. Thank you very much, viewers. Wherever you are in Africa, thank you very much for watching us. Continue watching us. Continue supporting us. Continue listening to us. Our message goes slowly, slowly, slowly. Gradually, we shall be there. Wherever you are in Africa, we have not said problems are not there. Problems are everywhere. This show, the People's Court, is a show, as PLO is saying, is a show to show, to talk about Africa. Let's talk about Africa. Let's manage Africa. Let's discuss what ails Africa, what destroys Africa, what has changed Africa to look like as it is today. This afternoon, we shall look at the impact and the implications of fake goods in the economies of Africa. Economies of Africa are suffering quite a tremendous loss of income as a result of fake goods. With me in the studio today to discuss this and ask many questions that she wants to know. First of all, to make sure and very categorical that I've written a statement that has just circulated in a few minutes to say, Dr. Fred Matiang is a man fighting corruption in Kenya. As a result of that, he is not part of the falsehood that is being peddled around in these corners, in newspapers, and in the phantom accounts about the fake gold that was captured. It is true there is freedom of association, assembly, organization, and a choice everywhere in Kenya. That freedom allows every human being, until crucified by the courts, found guilty, and told what crime they have committed, is when you can't associate with him. But if a thief meets you in a club, a rally, a political gathering, a church, you won't run away. So we shouldn't use photographs of those thieves having sat or taken selfies with other people to crucify innocent people. That's point number one. Point number two, Dr. Riyak, uh, Dr. Fred Matiang is a man who has been at the forefront as a super minister. Since he was appointed a super minister, he has become a target of malicious well calculated, well designed, well equipped, logistically supplied propaganda from a quarter that we all know. Where everybody in Kenya knows that there are people who don't like to see Dr. Ria, Dr. Fred Matiang 
succeeding. Therefore, they will look for every type of moment, every opportunity to slam, tarnish, besmirch, prostitute. I'm using very good English now. Prostitution of his name in every aspect that goes wrong in this country. The aim of these people who use phantom accounts, we know who has paid them, who pays them every day to use phantom accounts to mushroom stories against opponents, perceived opponents. Therefore, my statement can be found on my page, on my Facebook. I am a person who does not fear controversy. If controversy comes my way, I fight it. And I will fight controversy in here that fake goods are killing African economies. But I'm not going to get everybody who took, how many people who took photographs, if the photographs were there with Jesus? Have all of us died or gone to heaven? I was asking seriously. That is my stand. And those who want to read it, read it. Very clear. Don't create phantom accounts against us, against people, looking for small capital against people. Don't taint the name of people. Because this man said monkey and quangos. He does not want monkey business. And he doesn't want quango business. Kenyans are used to quango business. Matiang stopped the uniforms. Yes, people had got a tender of billions for uniforms. Mm -hmm. He stopped it. Wagwan, Wagwan, Wagwan. So he's an enemy. Don't use quangos. Don't use monkey business to discuss Dr. Fred Matiang. The Minister of Interior, he's a man who has done a great job. We want to support him and we stand by him using quangos and the monkey business to bring problems near him. We are, we are aware of the group that wants to do so. The people's courts, I leave it to you. There you are. Mm -hmm. That is the position I've taken. Now, coming back to implications and the impact of goods in the society, we've me in the studio now to, to chat the way and interrogate and roast. Roast me, interrogate me, yes. charge me. <laughs> charge I'm here. Me. I do not want to charge, just interrogate. And we shall use Kenya as a case study. Yes. Our fake goods mm -hmm. destroying the voter, uh, the, 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 the investor confidence, mm -hmm. the economy, and industries dying because of fake goods. Mm -hmm. Is Kenya becoming a conduit of fake goods? A dump site, fake, a dump site mm -hmm. of fake goods. What is going on in Kenya? We found rice, we found sugar. The DCI yesterday impounded sugar, rice. We found gold currency in a bank an institution of a bank that is supposed to keep money which is clean, a wind rounding money, fake money in banks. And not just a bank, a bank with a, an international reputation. Mm -hmm. And chattered. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so it's, it's worrying times in, in the country. And when you read headlines like that, so what you just talked about, uh, the CS, uh, Dr. Fred Matiang, even uh, I was just reading the, the start, the story today was uh, the, what was making headlines on the start. They're saying that was fake Matiang. They clarified that. Yes. It was not the real. Someone, mm -hmm. in order to make the check and even from the United Arab Emirates, mm -hmm. Or is it Emirates or Emirates? Emirates. United Arab Emirates. You need to know that. You know, that is the plane we will take when you go to Qatar. So Qatar with you. I'm, I'll go for the World Cup. You owe me that. Oh, <laughs> another date has arrived. I'm indebted. <laughs> so please pronounce it well. But but he they even wanted to drag in the opposition leader, uh, former Prime Minister Raila Odinga into it. Yes, uh, because he has taken a selfie. After they've taken the money, yes, 
and now they just wanted to to slant everybody else especially the other side of of course that's what they want to what they do all cartels have uh, their, their business they look for somebody else to fix because there is someone who is trying to fix everybody mm -hmm. and call himself a master of all games mm -hmm. in the last five years when president uru kenyatta was busy doing quite a lot of things mm -hmm. organizing the country after the, the the icc some people were stealing hey mm -hmm. people were stealing they stole money surely huge money is gone but let them spare us let's leave president uru kenyatta to do do you know what he should do mm -hmm. president uru kenyatta to develop this country Give him time in his last three years left, the 40 months left, to make a change. You can come back and destroy it if you want, mm -hmm. but give him a chance. Don't pretend to be a friend. Friends don't operate the way some people are operating in this country. Mm -hmm. It is true that over 30 billion in revenue annually is as a result of tax evasion of counterfeiting analyzed goods. Mm -hmm. Counterfeiting affects employment, it leads to loss of jobs and a lower foreign direct investment. Mm -hmm. It is also true that Kenya's geographical position and a robust economic environment makes it attractive to counterfeits mm -hmm. and you know fake goods Both and the diamonds. Yes. It is also true that I can add that Kenya being the hub of trade, mm -hmm. banking, you cannot come to Africa when you are not born to Kenya. Mm -hmm. If you can't go to Europe and say you are in Africa, you need to tell them, where did you go, Mombasa? <laughs> oh, Kenya, Nairobi. Mm -hmm. I went to Masai Mara. Because the rest of Africa have not something but not to the level of what it is. You can't tell me you are going to Sudan, South Sudan, to see what? To see people globally killing people. Kenya is the island of peace around this region. Kenya makes it very easy for us to know what type of life we need to have. Kenya makes it very difficult for everybody to understand that a nation has to be built on the principle of democracy. Mm -hmm. Kenya's democracy allows association, assembly, organization, and the choice mm -hmm. whom you love and whom you hate. Mm -hmm. You know, the choice to love and hate mm -hmm. is also part of your constitutional right. H hate might be a bit strong. No, maybe, it is true. Maybe. There are some people who have hate. a right to hate. To hate or you are not going to force a person to like you. To like somebody, okay. Yeah. If a lady has said enough is enough, there's nothing you can do. <laughs> Call it bye-bye. That is different. Uh, yes. When a lady says, but leadership, I think sometimes we just disagree with the, uh, well, maybe not so much, but uh, you think we disagree with the policies the other person is offering us, is not maybe what is resonates with us. But unfortunately, that is not how we have our politics in Africa. Hate is involved and uh, gets us into a lot of trouble. We want to see it is counterfeit that has killed mm. South Sudan. It is counterfeit that has killed mm -hmm. economies Somalia. It is counterfeit mm -hmm. that has killed countries like Sudan now. And counterfeit uh, is, a, is a very uh, uh, vital uh, breeding ground for corruption. Uh, they are very much uh, attached to each other, mm. the hip, yes. And if you've mentioned Somalia and, and uh, South Sudan. Somalia is the most corrupt country in the world. Then South Sudan comes second. So that tells you. So I, I, Mr. Mayon mm -hmm. said, can you be respectful towards some other uh, Yes, I am. But in Sudan, you have to tell the truth. South Sudan is the second worst corrupt mm -hmm. country in Africa below uh, Somalia. Somalia. Mm. At least Somalia is a failed state with terrorists. There is no, the, several terrorists are holding chunks of land. But it is Somalia which 
we cannot compare to another African country because it will be very useless mm. to do so. Yeah, Somalia, it's it's a very a special country. And I think uh, South Sudan, uh, because of what is happening, uh, it has become a breeding spot for these other vices. And hopefully they can get it right uh, uh, in regards to... We're we are placing our hope on the peace deal. So hopefully that will work out uh, for the country and uh, make it better. For so everybody. counterfeit goods. You saw the story of gold. Mm -hmm. Kenya has had several of late mm -hmm. counterfeit 32 billion currency mm -hmm. impounded in Ruiru, mm -hmm. a few kilometers away from the headquarters mm -hmm. of, of, of Kenya, Nairobi. Another money impounded 12 billion, is it, mm -hmm. in the Barclays Bank? Yes. Another person came with diam now diamonds found, mm -hmm. another currency found. So how much do we have, Miriam, yes. in terms of how many fake goods mm -hmm. and what are the implications of these fake goods? Kenya Over loses, to you now. Kenya loses about 30 billion Kenya shillings per year uh, in revenue annually uh, in, in, in terms of uh, as a result of especially tax evasion, things like this and counterfeiting and unlicensed program, uh, products. When you look at this gold story and how it went, if this sheikh also, I think in the morning we said he was also on the wrong. If he wanted to purchase gold, even the Kenyan government have some gold in the reservoirs, they would have given him some, but he decided to use a way that was not a very legal. So in this case, even the country loses. And now it becomes a phantom, uh, uh, it becomes a bigger problem. And uh, after it went out of hand, that is when he was looking for the president. And the president was wondering what is happening. Apparently, the guys had told him uh, the gold was being held at the GKA because of this and that. And, and, and they were lying to him and made a very fake headlines and sent him. This is, it's even, it even made headlines in Kenya. So it's a very intricate of people who, who work with impunity and steal from people with impunity. But even these outsiders, when they want to come in and uh, do business, in Kenya and with Kenyans, they have to learn to do things the right way. They're hurting our economies even with uh, uh, coming in. So do you think, mm -hmm. you think also the people buying this mm -hmm. the, uh, gold yes. and, uh, and uh, diamonds and uh, whatever currency, mm -hmm. they should also be arrested? Especially when you're buying with that Especially the money. princes and the prince, those <laughs> who are dealing. Why should the prince, mm -hmm. why should the people be dealing with fake currencies? Mm -hmm. Why? And be allowed to. Why, why, why should people, no, honestly, mm -hmm. why should we be a, a ground? Why should Africa be a ground where people, instead of coming in, they come to do business wrongly? Why is it that only the Middle East, which points at Africa, are we inferior? Mm -hmm. That we have sheikhs from Middle East flying in this country, flying into every world to create us problems. Those guys should also be arrested. Mm -hmm. Whether you are prince or princess or whatever, you should be charged. Mm -hmm. Yes. But if they're arrested... That's my view. In the country, their jails look like five stars. That's how they'll be jailed. Whether you're in a royal, royal what? Royal what? Mm -hmm. and, and this royal... If royalty... They do things with impunity. Yes, if royalty means... You should respect the rules of a certain country. Yes. You cannot go and pay 400 million mm. to some brown guys <laughs> with faces. Eh? So brown guys. Why don't you go and ask your embassy? Why have we put embassy in Saudi Arabia? Mm -hmm. Why have we put embassy in U United Arab Emirates? Why have we put embassy in Kuwait? Why has Africa opened embassies? Why are, why are these countries not using mm -hmm. channels of buying business genuinely? Mm -hmm. Uganda has gold. Kenya has gold. Every country in Africa has gold. Why can't you apply and say, I want 200 metric tons? Mm -hmm. It means those people back in their countries are also thieves. Mm -hmm. And we are fighting international corruption. They operate with them. I like the Americans. Mm -hmm. You know why? I like the Americans. Yes. The Americans catch you. When they catch you, whether the, whether the, the, the drugs are in Panama, they will charge the man of Panama mm. also. Mm -hmm. Whether the drugs are in Nairobi, 
They will charge the person in Kenya. They'll have a warrant for the person yes. in the other country. Like now they have a warrant for our minister of foreign affairs waiting. Mm -hmm. They have a warrant for this uh, Dabi. Idris Dabi. Idris Dabi, the fifth of Chad. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, when I talk... His Libya, partner already served term. Yes. The, the Chinese guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The man is serving his yes. sentence. Mm -hmm. And he has agreed there in America that indeed I took this... Don't say it is for... It was a bribe. Yes. I wanted the oil. So, so Idris got away with that and the Ugandan foreign minister also got away with that. And uh, so one of our viewers here is, is, is asking why is Africa becoming a dumping ground? I think because we allow it. Well, because, you know, you, you know, for example, like the, the example of Idris Dabi. It is very, very, very <laughs> difficult yes. for you to go to an Englishman mm -hmm. and tell him you have 200 tons of gold. Yes. The Englishman will say, let's first open an LOC, letter of credit. Mm -hmm. So, they, when they start the letter of credit, you know, a letter of credit will now bring you quite a lot of difficulties. Mm -hmm. You will run away very fast. So now you have to follow the legal. Yes, so, yes, because it will go through the bank. Mm -hmm. They will trace where it came from. They will even trace who is causing the problem, why it is delaying. Mm -hmm. So that type of delay makes people run away. Mm -hmm. So, but when you go to Dubai, is a dumping center for bad manners. A free fall, yes. I want to tell you frankly, ne never, never tell Matsanga we meet in D Dubai. I don't want. Because first of all, most of the people there are criminals, a bit of them. Very many criminals. The, main, the people you find in Dubai hotel, in hotels, mm -hmm. either they have a problem or they are waiting for diamonds mm -hmm. or they are waiting for gold or they are waiting for merchandise or they have containers coming from China. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, 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 yes. mm -hmm. I'm not saying the leadership, mm -hmm. but we people who have gone there. The laws there are not very stringent or what? No, it's a haven for banking. Mm -hmm. At least when they don't ask you what you have as long as you are brought in money business that's it hmm. this is the only jersey island the jersey mm -hmm. where people o okemo and um, Kajijuru yes. stashed the money because it is the, the is the one like another one where you can bank without it is a heaven for bankers mm. for business operatives Anyone telling someone that let's open an account in Dubai, if you follow that account, Emilium, mm -hmm. slowly mm -hmm. you will find it has a problem. Therefore, it is very important for Africans to be told. Mm -hmm. For me, David Matanga, if you tell me that you are taking my daughter to Dubai, I will disown the daughter. You don't want uh, your daughter to have a camel ride in the desert. For what? Uh, for, for Everybody who goes that side with a camel ride, the marriage breaks down. It's just what okay. Yeah. Right. Show me. <laughs> so, Show me which marriage has stayed. <laughs> Why should I go for camera ride? Camel ride. I can have you in horse ride here. Horse ride. No, camel ride is really nice, especially in the desert. Look at those guys. Mm -hmm. Fake goods yes. in Langata. Yes. It's you know? The Chinese. Kim, Kim, whom, who, why? <laughs> and then we have, we have the Henry. boys themselves. We have David, we have Henry, we have James there. Yeah, also. These are some of the things that the government mm -hmm. should lay down procedure. Mm -hmm. The embassy equally also should be blamed for you to come too late to tell us things went wrong. What is it for that we want mm -hmm. that went wrong? You should have told that much earlier that there was a problem. Mm. So the fake goods create an impact, mm -hmm. destroy the economy of those countries. It does. Creates, lowers the morale of investors. Mm -hmm. Investors, you Shy see, away. Yes. formerly 
there is money when you go to change money in in Europe. There were countries that they are marked. Mm -hmm. Where did you come from? Okay. When you say Nigeria, they say, okay, just hold a minute. You have some $50,000 or $20,000. Mm -hmm. They say, hold a minute. They take your money and take it back. You wait five minutes, 20 minutes. While you are waiting at the counter, mm -hmm. you see Metropolitan Police arriving. Okay. The manager was calling them because they they have every suspicion that that money from a Nigerian may not be clean. May, is not very clean money. But not all Nigerians, but no, um, it has created. That is the impact of it course. has created. Mm -hmm. So if you start with these goods fake in Kenya, mm -hmm. they could also create as a very bad impact that could end our economies in Africa going down. Mm -hmm. Another point that mm -hmm. I want to make, who are these people mm -hmm. who are involved in the goods transit in East Africa? Mm -hmm. I want to tell the people of Kenya that the, the cartels originate from Ngoma, Kinshasa, Kisangani, Bukavu, you know? <laughs> Kivu province and Kinshasa. Those are mainly dealers. They are heavy dealers, international companies mm -hmm. that are based in those countries. And if you go to offices like countries like in in, in Congo, in Bukavu or Kinshasa, Kinshasa or Kisangani, mm -hmm. you will find what? Offices for gold, these offices for timber, these offices for diamonds. Mm -hmm. Someone is seated there with a chair and you tell him, I want gold. He said, hold, come tomorrow. Which hotel are you leaving? You say, I'm leaving in such a hotel. So they ask you, how did you come? Uh, you say, of course, I came by some means. Mm -hmm. If you are not careful, you might not come back. Wow. They will come, bring police, kill you. Bring, so they're working in Kahoot. There are so many people who have disappeared in, a, in, 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 in the situation of diamonds, mm -hmm. gold, mm -hmm. scams around Congo and the western border of Uganda. Mm -hmm. It is true that there is a smuggling ring that extends all the way mm -hmm. from Mombasa up to the coast, Atlantic coast. Gabon, Cameroon, it links up there. It goes down Zambia. It comes back, it plays around there, it goes to wow. Zimbabwe. It's an intricate web. Then it connects to South Africa. It's a ring. It's a ring, yes. Then another, that's the Southern Hemisphere ring. Network one. Mm -hmm. Then we have network two. That begins from Lagos, Abuja. It goes through the Sahara or it goes through the Atlantic, Freetown or Liberia. You remember Sierra uh, Leone? Mm -hmm. Liberia, you saw recently in Liberia, mm -hmm. the, 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 the president was talking about lost money or... Lost money several times, yes. A syndicate also mm -hmm. of fake currency. Yes. So there is that Western axis of cartels mm -hmm. that deal with diamonds, fake currency, fake drugs, mm -hmm. or drugs, all the way to Cape Verde. Wow. If you look at international trading of cartels, then it goes to Spain, Madrid, Gibraltar. South America. South America, but this is entering. Mm -hmm. Then there is one, Cairo. These are the areas you must mark when you are traveling. Cairo is one of the hottest conduit mm -hmm. of either goods entering Saudi Arabia, or 
something else happening. So these are some of the things that we have to be careful when looking at Africa. Has Africa benefited from these roots, mm -hmm. from an expanded infrastructure? Or we have brought more problems <laughs> as a result of good roads. Yes. 200 metric tons could not come by plane. No, not possible. Because they could not land mm. without knots. But they came by road. So who are these custom officers who clear these goods? Mm -hmm. What happened to the roadblocks that are laid all the way from Uganda, from DRC Congo, mm -hmm. from the border points in South Sudan, in Nimule, in Pajule, in Kidepo, what happens? Two, uh, two months ago, a helicopter, two, a helicopter crashed at, min, at night. What was it flying that was carrying at night? These are some of the things that make everybody suspicious. A certain former cabinet minister was seen in Moyare. Mm. What was he trying to hide? You know, so many things are happening in this country that we must, at the same time as we look at the security situation, yes. we must be very careful, Miriam, that we don't kill the economy. Mm -hmm. The impact is really bad. Mm. The impact can create us a problem. Yes. Our children will grow in a mafia dome style of, ma of killings and counter killings, assassinations, mm -hmm. poisoning, and so many other things. Yes, indeed. And of course, you know, counterfeiting is also very closely related to other criminal activities, uh, such as the trade of narcotics, uh, money laundering, and of course, terrorism. And these things, you cannot, you cannot separate them. Uh, because they, they sort of they work hand in hand. So if you are a person who loves the shortcuts and uh, you uh, the, the involved in counterfeiting, it will not be very difficult for you to start getting involved in narcotics and uh, the money laundering, as we have seen, and also terrorism, because th that is how they fund terrorism. So they're closely related uh, with other uh, criminal activities. So indeed, it is a matter of national security, <laughs> this one right here. And for this story, uh, the, fa the gold... They, they did not just con that person to tell him they're taking him the gold, but also whatever that was supposed to be taken was fake. Indeed. <laughs> was fake gold. In, indeed. Mm -hmm. it, it, it will turn out the, the one of the things that they have to do with helping the, the, local, the local farmers mm -hmm. is the question of how on earth do we then help the how do we help african countries to stop corruption we need laboratories for testing these chemicals mm. for te test testing that's why they, this year is building a laboratory because people when they go to court they say no our gold was not mm. fake our co gold was not a fake gold. Our gold was real gold, but the man made it fake. Mm. We don't know where they took our gold, and they gave us this one. So development partners mm -hmm. must help Kenya to build these industries, mm. these uh, laboratories mm. for tests mm. to find out how forensically we can deal with yes, corruption. It can be tested and uh, help us curb the scourge of corruption in Kenya indeed. Is that... The best that we can do. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I think, and I think this is. A if there is any questions that you want to ask, yeah. that is our program. That's our show. That's our take. Mm -hmm. It is true that the Minister of Interior here fights corruption, mm -hmm. and therefore, as a Minister of Interior, he fights corruption to the teeth, mm -hmm. and he cannot be a party to such low-graded fakeness of gold. It is also a fact that people can take selfies, but taking selfies or having eaten bread from Jerusalem mm -hmm. or bread from the Sea of Capernaum, port of Capernaum, it doesn't mean that you went to heaven with God, mm -hmm. with Jesus. Jesus went alone and resurrected. Mm -hmm. So it does not mean that if Raira has got a selfie with Mr. Gichana or Mr. Jihad, Mm -hmm. Is it Jindy? Oh, th that guy. Zindia. Somebody like that. Yeah, he has ties. With he has been everywhere. 
This man has been even a politician. He has wanted to stand as a politician. And he failed. Everywhere. And so when Raila was in uh, Dubai recently, yeah. uh, a few weeks back, this operative went to his hotel and asked Raila to help uh, secure the release of the gold at JK, which was Raila didn't know it was uh, it was not true. Uh, he then called a number saved in his telephone as he as Fred Matiangi and handed it to Raila. But Raila quickly realized that it was not Matiangi on the line and returned the phone to the owner. He warned him against using his name in the dealings and ordered him out of his hotel. So this seems as though it was a setup. They were just trying to set up a story so that when this thing comes out in public, it appears as though everybody else, well, they were targeting other people. They wanted them to uh, to suck them into this scandal. So such <laughs> people like Sorry. that guy, yes. those guys yes. in, 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 in in China, mm. they should be dead. <laughs> they should have gone to the, 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 the sea. Mm. What is that sea? China Sea. They should be dead. Miriam, mm. look, they are going to Raira's hotel in Dubai. They are going in Dubai. Yes. They want to fix Raira. Yes. They want to bring it out. But there is a master of these people. So, I'm telling you. So Senator Wetangula fell into that. There is a master. <laughs> and these people don't know. There is a Machiavellian man in this country. Yes. There is someone in this country doing all these short jobs. One day you can, even if I'm not there, I'm killed. Remember, there is someone here who is very bad. Mm. He does all these things clandestinely. He pays. They pay they pay and they leave. Look at the way they paid for phantom accounts mm -hmm. created to harass President Uru Kenyatta. Phantom accounts. A name reads Mwangi. The owner is not Mwangi. Mm -hmm. If you call him on a messenger, mm -hmm. he can't speak one word of Mwangi. They have created fake accounts, phantom accounts to malice others they don't like. If this is the type of leadership that we are looking for, I lie. Let's go on. All right. I'm speaking the truth. You cannot look at the man going to Raida's hotel mm -hmm. in Dubai. So in really what, trying to bring in Raida in a fake deal. And Matiangi. And yes. Matiangi. Yes. So that Matiangi and Raida are mentioned yeah. so that their dignity and integrity mm. is soiled. The part of the sky, yes. This is very bad. We are dealing with people. Yes. You know, I told you the worst thing is to deal with a man who grew up from poverty. Have you heard me? Mm. Yes. A man who grew up from poverty. Yeah, he's very bad. Mm -hmm. Very bad. Or someone who did not go, who reached school and ran away. Just looked at the classes. And yes, the, the windows, like a coin. <laughs> if you are dealing with a coin, you have, it today is with you, mm. tomorrow is going to order for your assassination. And you die. <laughs> okay, there are people know. who want to make you if you have grown up from humble beginnings and God has kept you a miracle, mm -hmm. fine. Use it as an example to teach others mm -hmm. to get what they, you, you went through. Yes. But there are others who have used this example mm. to malice. Because if you tell him to go back to where he came from, psychologically, he can't. He can't. Mm, or she can't. But he wants people's children to suffer. To suffer. No, to know that we can steal any YS. We can concoct invoices. We can do this and get the money. You come this way. Don't go that way. Mama, mm -hmm. I have a lot at my heart. Mm -hmm. I can't speak more than this. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so we, we, we'll, we'll see that the develop, this is a developing story and we'll bring you the latest tomorrow. I'm sure something else will come up now that this is making headlines and in the front pages of the Kenyan newspapers. So I believe tomorrow though something else will, which would have come up and will keep you uh, posted about this uh, fake gold corruption that uh, uh, President Kenyatta, the UAE leader, was calling him. He was wondering what, what. He didn't even know.
because he was telling him my gold has been held up at the JKIA. That was the story this guy was peddling. And Kenyatta was like, well, what do you mean? Because if that was should should have been true, then JKIA would have called the media when they catch things like this. Normally, it's, it's a matter of public uh, interest. So oh, the president was shocked. <laughs> they were, it's an embarrassment. It is an embarrassment. So anyway, it's, it's, it is a developing story. They have, they have killed the country's name. Where Tangula has killed the country's name. The senator, yes. senator where Tangula, a mature man with the age, with children, should have just come out and said, Mr. President, I want to see you. There are people who tried, who have tried to con a certain country that will make our... He was a minister of foreign affairs. Mm -hmm. But no wonder, anyway, in the minister of foreign affairs, every, every national in the world who came across him suffered. Mm -hmm. He took a lot of bribes. A lot, every people were complaining, you know. Mm -hmm. But I cannot condemn him because I have no evidence. Now, the, but no, there is evidence of a letter him signing. You saw the signature. Mm -hmm. He signed for this money. What for? As a lawyer, you remember the Lake. The Lake Hotel. Mm, the Lake Agency, yes. Where Tangula left Kimunya to die alone. And he said, I'd rather die. Yes, <laughs> yet they went to, to Tripoli <laughs> and they got money. I'm telling you, you don't know. <laughs> I, I, I got everything. I said, Neil, me, when Kibaki told me that you'll work with this man, I told his excellency president, Kibaki, no, 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 no. Ni wache, ni wache, ni wache, ni wache. All right. The 40 days of a fifth arrived. Yes. Let's come to the <coughs> a few minutes. We are left with how many minutes? About eight. eight, yes. Women, the king of Swaziland says, every man must marry more than two wives. Mm. More than two because wives. More than one wife. More than one wife. Mm. Because there is there are plenty of beautiful girls in Swaziland. Mm -hmm. Can we, why don't we, why doesn't he export them? <laughs> to I what? am hungry. Oh my God. Uh, King we are hungry this way. People up this way are hungry. Which one? Who are you speaking on behalf of? Very many youths in Kenya. Okay. And the Uganda. Uganda thought they had the best. No, but they, they might not like, you do eat rice alone. Yeah. Yes, they, if you, if you chose the rice, Miriam, you, you chose the, the topic. Let's go for it. Ask the questions. I don't even have questions, but I'll just give a leader. Then Dr. Matanga will explain yes. on that. A King Muswati, three of Swaziland, the third of Swaziland, has declared in Mbambane, Swaziland, that men will from June 2019 be required to marry at least two or more wives or be jailed if they fail to do so. The king, who has 15 wives and 25 children, while his father and predecessor has more than 70 wives and 150 plus children, revealed that Swaziland is facing a very serious problem as there are more women than men in his country. He has 15 wives and 25 children. Like, what are you doing with 15 women? He, he, that sounds like, remember the playboy guy who died? No, 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 go ahead. Heffman. Don't. Heffman. Go on that. What do you do with He's 15 women? to keep women in the playboy mansion. No, what do you do with 15 women? And 25 children. That's a lot of headache. Who no, 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 no. He's a king. Okay. Leave the question of, a, of of children alone. And his father had 70 wives. Yes. Okay. But I think it's also part of their culture when you're a king. You it is their culture. Yes. So it, it, there it's acceptable. Yes. 15 women, but that's very good. For us, it's very strange. Over you you, side you, you change. Mm -hmm. 15 women is very good. What is, what is the problem? Okay. What problem do you have with 15 women? I have no problem. As long as I'm not one of them, I'm good. I just cannot be one of the 15. For me, that is not my, Why? That is not my cup of tea. No, let's be very <laughs> honest. Why? That is not my cup of tea. I don't share. I can only share my piece of bread. That's all. Anybody who shares Miriam's... I don't even share my cup of tea. 
<laughs> so, so I don't, I don't know how that works. But I think in in Swaziland, it's. Um, but the the queen, I think the culture, we shall bring it acceptable. down. Mm -hmm. The 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 queen, the king says he has never said that. That's another fake news. He said he's never said that. Yes, it has just come now. Mm -hmm. Some they were watching us from Babane, and they said, <laughs> please. <laughs> That, but that has been making headlines from last week, and uh, a lot of, especially uh, young men in Kenya, are very excited uh, about that uh, uh, that pr pronunciation from the king of. Uh, the king is very angry, mm -hmm. very annoyed. Mm -hmm. The government of Swaziland is on Tuesday angrily denied the viral online reports mm -hmm. that the king. <laughs> yep. Yeah, thank you for clarification. Mm -hmm. So. The king, I'm, I was also shocked that if you don't marry two, they will jail you. Yeah. At least if he was only saying, can you marry another woman? Enough, enough, yeah. In case this one has problems. Yes. That, that is African enough. Mm -hmm. But jailing a person because he has not married the two. Now that is ridiculous. That was fake. But he has 15 wives. That's, that's a lot of women. That's the tradition. That's the tradition, yes, yeah. when you're a king in, in Tuesday. You have 15 wives, 15 houses. So you, you, you choose every year. He no, marries. you give tonnage, time. Every time, every, every year. Mom, you so give. So every year he gets an, a new wife. Normally it's like hey. that. So he's not stopped having wives. Yes. Every year he has a new, a new bride. The new. So you stick with the new. The new dogo dogo. So and, and, and you know what? And then, have you gone through their culture? They test the breast. They test how sharp they are. What? You wanted me to say, yeah. Not really. <laughs> the sharpness of breasts. Okay. Determines. <laughs> if you qualify. That yeah. Is, that is. That's how, how they do it. But that is. Part you of come and pass it through the queen. I will take you there one day. I think I've seen. Will some, you? I've seen such images. Will um, you stand it? No, 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 I can't. I find it very abusive. It's. Uh, I can't. As a. As a you woman, have to dress up. Yes. In, and the man has also to look manly. Mm. I would fit in the Swazi Empire. You want to migrate to Switzerland? I would fit. Oh my God. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, <laughs> I will fit in the, in, the, in, the, in the Swazi Empire. Alfu is telling you know so stop making girls. Thank you, Alfu. Uh, the gestures when he's trying to, <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. I think it will be a, a, a lot of men's dream to go. To ha, ha, ha. Now what is wrong with you, Alfu? <laughs> Alfu, you are still Daniel Kimani. Don't even read that, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> no, but uh, Kimani, that's what is the tradition in uh, the tradition Stop in it, Daniel. <laughs> Daniel, that is the tradition in Swaziland. <laughs> oh my goodness. You must pass and those those breasts must be sharp. Oh. Not for any breasts. Okay. Because for any breasts mean you have already done something dangerous. Outside. What is dangerous? I don't want to say it during daytime TV. But you know nowadays women go and put silicone in the breast. So, but, so, one, so one is sixty years old, but they look like they're eighteen. Yeah, but they, even if you put silicone, we, we have there solutions. is an anti mm -hmm. to check. Or to check. Yes. Switzerland, they won't know if one. No, they do. You go through <laughs> a rigorous to appear to that. that is that, abuse. That me tell you that to appear abuse. to appear to that. To that function yes. of the king, yes, it is a number of months. Mm. Preparations are done. This is a bunch you are of taken, young You are girls. taken away from your family. Yes. If you are chosen mm. to be a bride, and the people fight. Yes, yes they do. They fight. The, it's the a competition. The young ladies to be with the king is one of those mm. that the king, whose what? eye. The eye might land on you. you. One must have really a very low self-esteem even to put yourself in that position. But I think it's their culture. So what is low esteem? S low self-esteem. What is low esteem? Low self-esteem. What is what is low esteem? By the time you even... That one, okay, that culture and circumcising women. <laughs> that is... That what is, is bad? All of them are terrible. No. Circumcision of women is terrible because a lot, of, a lot of these girls they they don't have a choice. But for that, I think the young girls have a choice. And which doing, choice? Uh, for going to be going to be married them. by a king. I think it's a choice. By a king is a, a very good gesture. It's a good gesture. Your family will have the, the money. No. The tower is paid by 
the king and there's a lot of money by the taxpayer yeah they, whatever yes yeah, but I think yeah, it's acceptable. It's the culture. It's not my cup of tea. I, I wouldn't. I, 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 like I said, I can only. One man is bread. cup of tea. Is a wrong person. <laughs> Another man is poison. Uh, yes. <laughs> love, <laughs> love is in the eyes of the beholder. Alpha, you know what I'm talking about. Done first class. Uh, yes, as 18. Yes, I've seen women as old as 60 years, but they still look like you know the. The chest look like they're, they're 17. So, uh, you know, women, we found ways to keep young. Alufu, Alufu you live in Japan. <laughs> you are in but Japan, it, calling us from Japan. <laughs> what happens in Japan? In South Korea. Yes, uh, yeah. Breast Renewal Company, there's one there where they make uh, the, the good silicone. But anyway, <laughs> so these 15 women, uh, obviously, you cannot really sustain all of them. So that means one of your guards somewhere, the younger ones, the gatekeepers, no. is having fun with Miriam, <laughs> Miriam, Miriam, no. What is the truth? Miriam, because, no. Because maybe you're not all that anyway, so they'll just come to you because you're a king, not because you're... My production that. manager has <laughs> said we should, we should stop this subject. Yes. If you are going to say... <laughs> That who, you cannot deal with them all. You can't. Who, I mean, his father had 70 women, like realistically, surely. You can deal with them, the African men. Serious African men who can deal with 15 women. Their guards help them to deal with their women. No, no, the, no, 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 no. That no, is no, the no, truth. No. That is the truth. Now, what does that signify? This is the African <laughs> court. What does it signify? <laughs> People out there. That should. women are of loose character. And I'm just saying, if you're married 70 of us, you have no, you have, you don't no love. Have, you don't even have a Why moral, don't you hit the moral point? authority to even judge. Yeah, <laughs> you my, don't have, and my you choice, can't make love the, with the, them. The choices. Or, 70 women, 15, I mean, what? It's like a brothel. <laughs> to me, it doesn't. You have had it, it yourself. It doesn't make sense. So any self-respect, but it is their culture. So that I will not be very critical of that. It's acceptable there, but for me, it just I can't. Like I can't even be a second wife or whatever. If another one is added, I'll just leave. I I, I got too much. I I can't. It's not my cup of tea. So yes. Eh. Whoever who sat down and, 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 and made polygamy and uh, uh, invented that, they did not have me in mind, sorry. <laughs> so I guess we'll see our viewers tomorrow. <laughs> You're shocked. But it is the, the culture of Swaziland, so, and it's normally a very big uh, festival that they look forward to yearly. Cause, uh, yeah, that King has Adam Beck DC mm -hmm. says, that is good. I will one day take a girl with beautiful breath. Uh, yes, for checking. for checking. You will never know. They, those things feel as though they are real. The good ones. You, hey! you pay. You pay a few millions. Daniel Okimani, <laughs> our user or man. You pay a few. There millions. is injection nowadays. It's yes, true. it's true. That's what mm -hmm. I'm talking about. Yes, they place them very well. Even if you've had 15 kids, you look like you're 17. You've heard of breast reductions uh, uh, and things like that. So women, we 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 are covered. So be good. As long as so, you have the money. <laughs> thank you very much. Today, yes. the impact of fake goods on African economies. Yes. Africa loses over 30 billion, isn't it? Yes. 30 billion shillings. Mm. 30 billion shillings. Kenya, sorry. Mm. Loses 30 billion shillings. Annually. Annually. Because, of, fake thing. because of the fake goods. Yeah. John Clark, you're saying women even go to queue to see if they'll be chosen. Yes, John Clark they have very low self-esteem you must really be so unsure but of are, yourself are, are we africans are, are, are we as africans no are we as africans do we still have the most archaic laws and archaic customs i think some of these things are just backward and abuse of power what is the difference <laughs> no you might be blaming africa yes, but what is the difference backward. between work catwalk mm -hmm. and uh, going to see where the king will pick you. But catwalk, you're selling the clothes. No? And uh, you sell your body also? You sell the clothes. Mutu no. anakupenda? No. Let's be very honest. No, if you came there with your own intentions, that is not my problem. My problem is to sell this Louis Vuitton I'm wearing. That's it. And then you are, you leave it for who? 
uh, the ones who go by the stars, the Hollywood stars, I, I need, to when buy I it. go for catwalk, don't go for catwalk. Fashion show, I need to buy the fashion and the owner. See, your intentions are very warped. Yes, that's the problem. That is when, okay. when I'm stretching the Let runway. Let will be warped, but I'm, I'm not eating <laughs> the cloth. When I'm I am not eating the dress. I want to read the tangibles. You know, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> you need to get some rest. Yes, you need it. <laughs> I cannot. Wait How can you. I buy the dress? But then you're not supposed the to owner. be there. The people who want to buy the dress are the ones who are supposed to show up to buy the dress. Like uh, you go to a bar. Okay. You go to Uganda for tourism. Okay. Good girls come in a club serving you with calves. Okay. Then, so if you're a tourist, serving you. listen, when you're a tourist, what do you do? You just you just take the drink and you pay the tip and you like, and the then girls, they're walking. Oh my goodness. Then, is that tourism? It is tourism. You have gone to, Amer to Vienna mm -hmm. and then you go to a nightclub, the ladies are dancing. Mm -hmm. How will you test the Vienna life? I go to the opera house. I love classical music. That Even the opera house, the dancers no, are they, very opera. They don't dance. Uh, they dance ballet at the opera house. Yes, that's even better. That's beautiful. That is wonderful music. People who are just go there and enjoy ballet and go home. Uh, you know, Arufu, <laughs> Arufu, people like Miriam are hard. Hard nuts to crack. Totally. Totally. I don't play those games. So no games, <laughs> no monkey business. Alfu using those, don't confuse. Yes, he's tr he's trying to drag me into this into this uh, fellowship. No monkey game. Into this fellowship that and no quango ship. <laughs> no quango ship, especially no monkey business. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you very much, viewers. <laughs> That's all we have today. Today, yeah. Just we look like at you tomorrow. Don't forget to go and register your Uduma number. Yes, and every now and then it's we good. have only one day left. Yes, I think tomorrow we shall have the afternoon. All of us, mm -hmm. people, to go and you know finish their paperwork. Oh, for the Uduma number. Yes, I took mine. They brought it. Uh, you know, our estate. We didn't even have to go out there. And, and so you you are waiting for. I'm good. I did that like three weeks ago, actually. Oh, so now that's good. Yes. I'm a very uh, good citizen. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much. Only two days left to register Uduma number. Yes. Please. Go on and register, Kenyans, please. And now they're flocking the Uduma number centers, and they had all this time. Yes. You should see them. That's what we do. Last minute, people. Unfortunately. God created us last. <laughs> he did? Yeah, that's why there's still darkness. No wonder we have the best in... Not darkness. <laughs> Black don't crack. We don't put fillers. Because you were created the best. There's darkness. <laughs> there's darkness. No, we, we, we refuse that tag of a, of a dark continent. I think there's so much. We Johnny just, Clark mm -hmm. says the governor song calls the golden gold template. <laughs> <laughs> they, he needs to be examined. Are they real gold? John Clark. Tell us. That is blasphemy. <laughs> if if you don't if, if, if Sonko heard you talking about his that blings and his, and his blings, you're gonna get us into trouble. Trouble. We have enough to deal with. We have enough already. trouble to deal. <laughs> don't bring us more. <laughs> All right. Mm. We'll see you tomorrow then. Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you very much, viewers. There we come to the end of our show yes. this afternoon. God bless you. God bless everybody. Until tomorrow at 11 a.m., good morning, Africa. All our people, staff in Berlin, in South Africa, in, in, in Nairobi, in London, and in the United States, that are connecting us on our satellite systems. Good afternoon. Take care. Miriam, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, too.
must be our goal and our guide. And all that we strive for as a human family, dignity and hope, progress and prosperity, depends on peace. But peace depends on us.